life and legacy of Dr. King is Jackie Robinson family Y board member and 2020 Human Dignity Award honoree D. Sanford. Good morning, D. How you doing? Fine. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. Um, so, you know, let's just delve into this, uh, you know, the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. What does this mean for us today? Well, I think his son was making such uh, valid remarks about the fact that we don't want to put him on the shelf and then pull him back down a year later. We want to live these values. And they're really about honesty, justice, equality, uh, the character that we are to demonstrate, the quality of our character. All of those things are so important and we can live those every day, service to the community living a life of service to someone other than yourself is, uh, is such an important quality that Dr. King espoused his entire short life. Yeah, and, and very important in this day and age, I feel like that everybody could take a moment to just reflect on those, to look at those characteristics, to see how they <clears throat> can go and, and perhaps include those in their daily lives. Exactly. And we can include them in our daily lives. If we wake up in the morning and as we look in the mirror, we determine that we're going to do something good to be a blessing to someone else, to remember to keep our thoughts pure and to reach out and try to, uh, you know, give a hand to someone who's in need yeah. and to be fair. Yeah, and I think that now is such a tough time. And of course, here in San Diego, you know, a lot of people typically would be going to breakfasts, would be going and honoring the legacy. It's a little different this year trying to find a way to do that, to try to find a way to do that safely and to still have a day of service even if you're stuck at home. Pretty much everything is virtual, but as we found out Thursday evening when we did our own program, it was exciting. We did a Zoom before and, and we saw our major sponsors. There were about 35 people on the screen and um, we're just learning how to do things differently. No one wants to take a chance being around a bunch of people. So being able to enjoy the celebration, enjoy the program, hear the words that we need to hear to revive us and to get excited and energized about doing what we can in the coming year, it's become a way of life now, the virtual celebration. And it's, and it's, um, it's appropriate and it's effective. Yeah, and I think that that message of day of service, that message of helping out your community, I think because of the pandemic, that's now more important than ever. And like you say, more than just tomorrow doing that, it really has to be an everyday thing. It has to be a way of life. It has to be a way that you uh, operate with people, interact with people, thinking about other people, trying to meet the needs, and just a change of heart in some situations. Some people have grown so hard-hearted that they can't see beyond the old ways of thinking, and that simply has to change. You know, we talk about um, the message to kids on this day, the, uh, you know, remembering the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and passing that on to some uh, the younger generations here. I think that that can still be done tomorrow uh, by parents. I think that that's probably most important for parents to go and do tomorrow. I think today is a good day to start, too. It's a beautiful day. You know, we have to remember when we talk about the children, Martin Luther King Jr. was so young. Um, my grandson turned 25 today. I talked to him out and he's in Pittsburgh and he was just um, he's just a few years younger, eight years younger than Martin Luther King was when he was very active and having so many profound things to say and opening up our minds to nonviolence and that, that message of nonviolence, uh, there's a message that we certainly need to be talking about every single day. Uh, I don't think any of the people that stormed the Capitol would want to sit down and be beat like he was and John Lewis was and others were, but we don't have to um, put ourselves in a position of violence to accomplish what we think we will. So I think those messages are appropriate every single day. But I think just remembering how young he was mm -hmm. and that you can be responsible as a young person. It was a reflection of how he was raised. I think a lot of times we wait too long to instill values in our children that are lifelong values that result in them being the kind of citizens that you really can sleep at night knowing that they're a contribution and an asset in the community rather than a, a problem. 
su such great words and words that are so important for us all to come together to hear, to think about um, today and tomorrow. Like you say, you don't have to wait until tomorrow. Uh, you can obviously go today, you know, I think using uh, the resources um, of the computer a lot of times to go and look back at some of those speeches um, are, are so valuable to our youth and to everybody right now. D. Sanford. Exactly. Yes. And who would have thought that it would still be a, a situation today that we had to really consider what, what Martin Luther King Jr. said so many years ago. He's been gone so many years. I remember when he passed away. So who would think that all these years later that we would still be fighting the same battle. We, the struggle would still be continuing. We would have thought that now we could put all of that to bed and, and just live a life of freedom and equality and justice and love. Yeah, and I know, I know for you, I mean, I've talked to you before. Um, you have such a positive message uh, this morning for us, and we really appreciate you coming and joining us to remember the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you so much. I'm always available. All right. Thanks, Dee. Okay. We're